Early in the morning, around three o'clock, when monks are practicing walking meditation, people are still in their dreams. We know that a person may develop great attachment in a dream, cry or laugh, love or hate or fear, and so on, because it is difficult to be aware when it happens in a dream. Likewise, if the world we live in is also a dream, a dream shared by all living beings, how do we perceive it, especially when it is a kind of dream that will not be awakened by itself? Neither dynamic nor static states would be perceived at all. Walking meditation helps to still the mind like serene water under turmoil conditions. By alternating with the static meditation practices, concentration will function all the time and places. The strength of concentration would thus become extensive. Monks walk meditatively through the busy strips with eyes down. The dramatic contrast has captured the attention from people around. The discrepancy between the monks and the crowd originates from the appearances and the mindfulness of the monks. No matter where they live, people have been waiting for a kind of touch. A touch that transmits among hearts that would be the beginning of an illuminated life. Humans have six senses, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. If the mind craves for worldly sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, an idea, it will manipulate the other five senses to draw outwardly like a suction cup. The clamor in the downtown is just an intense reflection of this desire. There are all kinds of packaged attractions to the six senses waiting to be enjoyed. However, happiness created through the external world and the sense organs is transitory and inferior. It causes people to indulge in bubble-like pursuits which will never be fulfilled, constantly losing and constantly craving. This craving drives people to be reborn into this world unceasingly, subjected to endless suffering such as aging, illness, death, meeting with what we hate and parting with what we love, etc. When the Buddha attained enlightenment, he recognized firstly that only if we stopped the functions of six senses, we could be free from involuntary birth and death. The ultimate joy will then emerge. Body and mind should also be restrained when facing fame, benefits and offerings. The Buddha warned earnestly that the world is the creation of the heedless six senses. It is bound to be an elusive dream. However, the dream has deceived the dreamer and the dreamer continues the cycle of dream. 
despite of having experienced eons of rebirths and regardless of whatever possessions they may have had, if in the eyes of people they are only worldly things, they will have nothing at all in the end. In order to break through the illusion, the focus of the six senses must be withdrawn. Keep eyes down by only looking at the area of the next step. That helps to avoid most of the side temptations. When the external temptation appears, eyes will move restlessly due to yearning. Taming them requires daily practice. Otherwise, a sudden movement or sound will trigger the eyes to dart out in a wild manner with one caught unprepared. Similarly, shut off the ears from various sounds and pay no attention to any smells. With restraint of body and mind, monks pass through the bustling streets like a clear stream of tranquility flowing into people's mind. Not only moistening the seeds of peace in the depth, but also pacifying the restless dust floating on the surface. When we gradually calm down, no matter the road underneath is asphalt or cement, clean or dirty, all discriminations begin to fade away, accompanied by a pure joy emerging afterwards. As concentration strengthens, the mind attains perfect calm and enables to manipulate the five senses freely. When the senses are released, everything can be perceived, and when they are withdrawn, the physical bodies seem to be isolated from the clamor of streets, and all the attractive qualities to the six senses have vanished. Even the breath has stopped, and walking becomes spontaneous. In the meditation hall, and the Buddha chanting hall, there is also walking meditation, but it has less disturbances from the outside world. These disturbances include basic elements that disturb the mind, such as mountain scenery, the sound from birds and insects, the smell of flowers and grasses, an uncomfortable climate. They are even intensely reflected in the form of busy streets. If these distractions can be overcome promptly, then the strength of the concentration will be enhanced. It is thus obvious that walking meditation should not only be undertaken as daily walking, but also practiced as a routine cultivation. This is exactly requested by the Buddha to his disciples. When lay people see the monks, some feel curious, some feel impulsive, and some are moved quietly. Whether inner touches occur now or in the distant future, those who set the fairy sails forward and lead sentient beings crossing over the ocean of misery are always the simple appearances, wordless silence, and the fragrance of virtue presented by the monks. Some say that to live is to find happiness. What point is it if the happiness is not worldly? Since the world is an illusion, its pleasure is also not real. And real pleasure is by no means happiness. Others say that it is difficult to let go of worldly pleasure. 
The reason why we create this world is not that the craving is human nature, but that we think the world is real. Acquiring truth is essential for humans. It is just like awakening from a dream. Dreamy attachment and desire are naturally abandoned after finding it unreal. Hence, we need to see through the reality of the world. The night falls and conceals the uproar of the day. Amidst lights and liquors, singing and dancing, noise and excitement begin to continue in another way. Like the constantly dashing waves of the sea, people chase after them, get pleased or feel sorrow, but do not realize that they possess the entire ocean, an inexhaustible and omnipotent treasure of the Buddha nature. This self-nature is boundless and exists in the arising and disappearing of all things, invisible and formless. That is the reality after the dream awakens. By their own practice, monks reveal the key to the treasure, to restrain the six senses, and through the attainment of inner calm and stability to experience the Buddha nature. Every thought is a crossroad, good or evil, awakened or lost. Only the eyes with enlightened wisdom can discern its course and guide people to step towards the truth clearly and honestly. People who come across may not understand the meaning of the practice, but spontaneously or not, they showed respect in their own way. When the conditions are mature, the moment of awakening will eventually come. 